Kill one. Got him. Frag out. Dead. He died from the grenade. Yeah. Right down. Oh God. Hell down. Shoot down. What's up comrades? Oh gosh, it's too hot for a gawker in here. Today I'm taking a look at the AKS-74U gel blaster from the company Double Bell. The AKS-74U is a short barreled variant that was used by Russian helicopter or vehicle operators. And outside of Russia, it also goes by the nickname Krinkov. I purchased this one here from Safari Zuma Tactical here in Adelaide. And as you'll see in some of the gameplay footage later on, I've already used this out in the rain and mud at a Milsim event and it still works completely fine. I do plan to upgrade it soon though, so I thought I'd do this review while it's still in its stock form. Double Bell have released a bunch of different AK gel blasters recently, and here I'm just browsing through them on Watt International's website. But whether you like a more traditional looking AK, or you like the more modern Zenico hardware, I think there's something for everyone. And personally, I really like the short barrel of the Krinkovs, it's great for CQB. Now all of the Double Bell AKs are fully metal externally and internally, aside from some real wood furnishings or polymer furnishings, depending on which model you pick up. Starting at the front of the blaster, this is both my favourite and least favourite thing about the blaster. If you know your AKS-74Us, you know that this muzzle device on the front is called a muzzle booster. On the real steel thing, the muzzle booster is required with such a short barrel to allow it to actually cycle. So with the gel blaster version, you obviously want to keep that on there, right? Well, Double Bell have actually thought of that, and inside the gas booster is both a top and bottom tongue fully adjustable hop-up that uses grub screws. So in my opinion, there's no reason to ever want to remove that muzzle booster. But now it's time for my least favourite thing about the blaster. If we take a look at the back of the muzzle booster here, not only does it not reach the detent pin, but it doesn't line up with the detent pin either. My best guess is that whoever designed the muzzle booster didn't actually test fit it on the blaster after making it. And now the only time ever that I'm going to be removing the muzzle booster is simply to show you one more potential downside of the blaster, and that is the inner barrel. The inner barrel has an outer diameter of 8.6mm rather than the standard 95 and that fits snug inside the outer barrel. So if for some reason you ever wanted to upgrade your barrel in any of the double bell AKs, short of drilling out the entire outer barrel, it's simply not an option. Also, the inner barrel has an inner diameter of 7.5 millimeters, which is a little bit looser than what I usually like to use, which is 7.3 millimeters. So I would have liked to swap the barrel out, but I'm guessing they just didn't want to retool from the airsoft version of this blaster. The handguard on this particular model has a real wood upper and Zenitco lower. I particularly like the Zenitco lower because it has side Picatinny rails where I can mount a GoPro or a flashlight. I'm still not 100% sold on the vertical grip, but it does look cool as well. Up top, it has the correct sights for an AKS-74U. You can flip the rear sight to change between close range and 400 to 500 yards, but being gelable, that's more like 40 to 50 meters. The upper receiver is hinged like the real thing, and by not having an electronic blowback, there's plenty of space inside for your mini Tamiya connected battery. On the left side is a QD scope mount. Here I've modified a Midwest Industries full length Picatinny rail removing some of the front Picatinny segments. This allows it to fit the shorter space available on a Krinkov due to that further back rear iron sight placement. On the other side of the blaster is the selector switch. Just like the real thing, up is safe, center is full auto, and down is semi-auto. The selector switch does scrape metal to metal and instantly scratched on first use. But looking at photos online, it seems normal on the real thing as well, so I guess props for realism. Now, just like most of the gel ball AKs, this comes with an incorrect magazine for its type. Visually, the magazine should have less of a curve to it and be made of plastic rather than metal. The RX AK-102 mags are a close match being 5.56, but to get other brands of mags to actually fit in this blaster from Double Bell, 
You'll need to file down the mag catch a little until it locks in, due to other brands having a thicker locking nub. Once you file it down though, it can take RX mags or even APS mags. The grip is pretty much the only plastic part on the entire blaster. This model here usually comes with a black grip, but I got someone to swap with me who wanted a black one and didn't want the fake wood one. And I think the fake wood does look nicer with the real wood upper. At the rear, this model has the triangular shaped folding stock. I thought it looked nicer than the version with the Zenico stock or the wire stock, and it's very sturdy overall compared to those. It also has a sling point on the left side, which comes in very handy, especially for full day events. That pretty much covers my overview of the blaster. Let's see how it shoots over the chronograph. <laughs> It got a high of 336 feet per second, a low of 290, and an average of 317. Very impressive velocities for a stock gel blaster, though I think it could have been a little more consistent if the barrel had a 7.3mm internal diameter rather than a looser 75 On full auto, the rate of fire was 1024 rounds per minute or 17.1 rounds per second, which definitely isn't bad for a stock gel blaster. Now I want to test accuracy though, so shooting from a distance of 30 meters at a target 1 meter in diameter, I've already dialed in the hop up that's built into the muzzle booster, so let's see how well it works. Okay guys, so this target here has a diameter of 1 meter, and we're going to go back 30 meters away. This marker here is 10 meters, 15, 20, 25 and all the way here at the fence line is 30 meters just gonna put it on full auto and we'll see how it does with some short bursts For a stock gel blaster, that's actually pretty good. So what do I think of the double bell Krinkov? Well, it survived an entire day of rain and mud at a milsim that I'll show you some gameplay of in a moment. It's also fully metal externally and internally and features real wood or polymer depending on which version you get. So props for realism. It has a built-in hop up inside the muzzle booster so you never actually have to take it off which is an integral part of the real steel thing's actual function, so having it on there is another props for realism. It's disappointing though that the detent pin doesn't line up with the groove on the muzzle booster to lock it in, so that's one detraction from realism. 
And also the inner barrel has an outer diameter of 8.6, which is really weird for a gel blaster, which usually have 9.5. So that's gonna be quite difficult to upgrade the inner barrel unless you drill the entire outer barrel out to 9.5. Velocity, rate of fire, and accuracy were all really nice though for a stock gel blaster. Pretty much the only thing I'll actually upgrade is the rate of fire. But that's it for this video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. I'll leave you now with some gameplay footage from the Milsim. I hope you enjoy. See ya. Brad, yo, what's yep. Let's go, moving. Let's go. Get there, get there, boys, get there. Front left, front left. Front left. All right. Take up a defensive position, don't push. So we get the rest of our squad back. Kill them. Got him. Right, you're moving right. Yep. Oh, yeah. He hits that gate. We're going to have to have a frag right, ready to get behind him. I will gladly throw a nade. Once he gets up here, right shield coming in. Well, you watch out, right shield coming forward. I have a grenade ready for him. Out, out. Stay there, mate. Stay there. Ready. Move across. Frag out. That should have got him. He died from the grenade. Yeah. Right down! Oh God. Shield down! Shield down! Oh! In the open, what? I'm hit! Containers, behind containers. Uh, one did. There was a guy in Gilly in this bush. Got him! Ready to throw? Should I throw? I can't throw over those. Oh, I can throw for these, yes. We're gonna go straight to the spawn point. Direct, are any of our guys there? Frog out! <laughs> Did my grenade get anyone? Which one? I don't know, either of them. Well, the I first one got the engineer. Oh, nice. Oh, so he's dead. Oh, oh. <laughs> we got engineer down this side. He was naded. <laughs> They're engineer. It's spectacular. Close to where he is. He's dead. Yeah. Beautiful. He landed. Bounced. Oh, you're dead. And then it sprung open. It was beautiful. <laughs> and he's literally, he's like this. So you got the barrier there. He's like. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> I knew there'd be some over there. <laughs>